Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another arcade restoration series. And in this one, we're gonna be restoring this Cheyenne arcade gun game uh, made by Exidy. And Exidy made a bunch of gun games that all ran on the same hardware in the early 80s. Cheyenne was one of them, Crossbow's another one, uh, Crackshot, Chiller, who done it? I mean, there were a ton of these gun games that they made running on the same 440 hardware, which was nice because, you know, just like any other conversion class, arcade operators could just swap the boards and some artwork and have a different gun game. So anyways, Cheyenne's my favorite of the bunch because it's got this Western theme. And here you can see the cabinet. This is how it was when I picked it up. It's in my storage unit, or at least at this time it was. You can see cosmetically it needs some work, uh, especially the CPO. Uh, it didn't have the side art and the vinyl is, you know, surprisingly in decent shape, but I went back and forth and ultimately I decided, you know, if I'm going to be restoring any of this game, I might as well do the whole thing, go the whole nine yards. So, uh, so I decided I would just kind of give it the whole works and, uh, here I'm just getting ready to restore it, which means stripping the cabinet down to basically nothing, you know, gutting it out taking everything off because uh, I needed to access the control panel. So right here, what I'm actually doing first is taking the gun off. And these guns that they put on here are really heavy duty. The plate is really heavy duty. The gun is pretty heavy. You know, it's, this is a metal synthetic gun that they made. Uh, originally, this game came with a wood stock gun, which is really, you know, sharp looking, you know, fits the theme. But what ended up happening from what I uh, understand is that those wood stocks would break. And so they replaced it with the synthetic gun. Uh, and so here I just <laughs> sped everything up so that we wouldn't have to waste time. It actually took me a while to get this this gun off because these bolts are were tight, like really tight. And uh, reaching up inside through the coin door is really difficult. And the reason why I'm doing it that way is these control panels on these cabinets were never meant to be removed. You know, almost every other game, you can unlatch the control panel and then the whole thing comes off, but not with these games. They were actually, I think, stapled in or uh, glued in place. They were not meant to be removed, which made this a complete challenge. So I had to really work my butt off to get this, this gun off. And uh, you'll see later in the video uh, how much of a hassle it is just to work with this control panel. But uh, but yeah, here, so I finally got the four bolts off and this whole thing kind of comes as one. And then there's just a little Molex in there uh, that attaches the all the wiring to the gun. So now that that's off, you can kind of get a, a, a look here and see how chewed up the control panel is. And someone put this uh, square piece of plexi between the gun and the control panel. I'm not sure why if they did that so that uh, it would raise the gun up a little bit because this cabinet's actually pretty short. And it and I have to, in order to play this game, I, I played it before I restored, I started restoring it. And uh, I had to kind of squat down because uh, the leg levelers weren't very high. And uh, it was kind of awkward. I mean, for someone that's shorter, it's probably no problem. But for me, I was having trouble uh, getting at the right angle. So. I'm not sure if they put this plexi, this piece of plexi on there just to, to raise the gun a little bit or to protect it somehow, but uh, I decided to, to get rid of that. It looked pretty junky, so it was just pretty much stuck on there. It, there was no glue or um, no screws or anything holding it down, so I just ended up going with this flathead screwdriver and popping the thing off there. And I did look up to make sure that this wasn't the way that it was supposed to be. There was never a piece of plexi between the gun and the control panel. So that's not original at all. But once I remove this, you can really see how chewed up the wood is. And, you know, honestly, maybe they put that on there because the wood was so chewed up. I don't know. So there we go. And yeah, look at, <laughs> look at that wood. It is just garbage. It's really chewed up. I, uh, you'll see later on how much Bondo I have to, I have to lay on that just to repair that wood. But, uh, yeah, so now we're just going to replace, uh, or pull off the, the plexiglass here for the bezel. And this is not an original bezel and I'm not sure why, but a lot of these Cheyenne games, I don't know about the other Exidy games, but I've seen a lot of Cheyennes that are completely missing the original bezel and the original bezel has some really pretty artwork screened on it 
But for whatever reason, a lot of times those are missing and no one reproduces those. So they're tough to come by. So anyways, I'm whoever had this before me replaced that uh, just with a plain piece of, piece of plexi and then they painted black on there, I'm sure just to block some of the light because uh, there, you can kind of see there's there would be some spill coming from the marquee at the top. And then the monitor, which you can't see, is, is actually sitting uh, right on the other side of the control panel facing up because there was a mirror that would reflect it. So there would be some more uh, spill from the monitor there. So I'm sure that they, they painted black on that bezel just to, to block that light. Uh, you can't see me now. I went in the back of the cabinet. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to get this button out of there. And that was a real pain in the ass too because I had to reach way up in there and the nut that was holding the button in place was really tight. So not being able to remove that control panel really made this a challenge. And I, I don't know why they decided to go that route, but it's a real pain in the ass. All right, so again, you can, you can't see me in the back, but I'm basically I'm just removing the coin door here, just getting the the um, nuts on the back out, off. Nothing too spectacular here. Again, I just sped this up because it's you know nothing too interesting. Just removing a coin door, and then uh, I'll proceed to to remove everything else. You know the monitor, all the guts, and then we can kind of proceed from there. But uh, I was really excited to restore this game. It's a really fun game. I don't have any gun games, so I was pretty excited to get to this one. And I actually, the story with this is I picked it up. Uh, it's one of these, I don't know if you'd call it a classic story, uh, but maybe a, a lucky pickup story where um, I a bunch of collectors tried to jump on this, and I just happened to catch the lady. It was this little old lady that was selling this. And uh, she claimed that she had this in her basement for about 30 years. And I believe it because it's a pretty clean, on the inside, it's pretty clean. Everything everything works. It doesn't look like it's really been tampered with. So, uh, so yeah, I think I got really lucky there. And I got it for a really good price. But, uh, but yeah, this is, so you can see I, I've got a heat gun here. And sliver by sliver, I'm uh, removing the control panel overlay. And again, this is a real pain in the ass because uh, it's a wood control panel that, and uh, you know, like with a metal control panel, it's pretty darn easy to get a, usually to get a CPO off. But with wood like this, it likes to lift some of the wood, especially with a an old original control panel overlay that's never been removed before. So this was pretty painstaking, uh, quite a, a pain in the ass, so to speak. What I ended up doing here is that after I got as much as I could with the heat gun, I tried a few other things. First, I tried, I think, uh, goof off. And then I try and uh, I think I ultimately I went with a paint stripper. I can't remember. I'm kind of watching this now in hindsight. I started on this a few months ago. And so I'm trying to re remember for myself what I did here because I haven't watched this since. But but yeah, I mean, this took. I want to say this probably took me a couple hours. It was just, it's not fun. It's not fun at all. Okay, so here we go. Now I'm breaking out the big stuff. Um, you can see I put this uh, piece of glass on the side because I didn't want to damage any of the black vinyl because on the inside edges of this cabinet, there's black vinyl throughout the whole thing. So I just put that glass on there to protect it while I use this paint stripper. And this stuff is really powerful. It's really strong. You only need to let it sit for, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes tops, and it just eats away at any of the artwork. It'll eat away at vinyl. It'll eat away at just about anything you can throw at it, uh, including your skin. So you do, need, you do need to wear some chemical gloves, not just latex gloves. Otherwise, it burns, believe me. And so I got most of it off, so I went back to some goof off here. And I got to be honest, it doesn't it didn't really work the way I wanted it to. I had to use a lot of it. And ultimately I think I go back to the paint stripper. It just, it didn't get everything I wanted it to. I had to use a hell of a lot of it. Um, goof off is pretty good. It's a lot stronger than like goo gun, but when you're dealing with something like this, sometimes you just have to go with that paint stripper. That stuff is magic, but it's dangerous. <laughs> yeah, here we go. So this is, this is more of that paint stripper. It's kind of a foamy, uh, material. And the cans of that stuff aren't aren't very expensive, so I, I highly recommend it. 
I use a lot of it, especially with control panel overlays. That's probably where I use it the most. Some people use like citrus strip and uh, I haven't had as much luck. It seems to make more of a mess than this. Granted that when you use this paint stripper, it kind of gums everything up. So uh, you have to kind of be careful. It makes kind of a sludgy material, but it's not that bad. All right, so now we're just going to remove a bunch of the, well, actually all of the T molding. And you can't really see it very well but the top corner i'm not sure if yeah i think it is this one yeah the top right corner someone did a real half-assed job trying to re uh, repair it apparently i'm guessing it broke off and so someone did a really bad bondo job and they just kind of glued the t-molding in place they didn't even you know use the um, the barbs of it. They just cut off all that and then just glued it over the top. So we'll fix that corner because it was, it's pretty bad. You can kind of see it now. Uh, and then they just painted over it. You know, it's, it's really bad and it doesn't, it's not even, even flush with the rest of the cabinet. It's just ugly. There you can see it really well, but, uh, but we'll take care of that. Now this vinyl was almost as bad as the control panel overlay, not quite as bad, but that's it was really stuck on there and in some parts it actually lifted the wood and it wouldn't come off very even so again i had to i sped all this up because this took me a few hours just a real pain in the ass this uh this vinyl is like a textured vinyl and it's it's really really heavy duty stuff it's really on there i mean i I w if it had been just a little bit better, like around some of the edges, I probably would have left it alone and not replaced it, but it was enough to bother me. So I had decided to go through all this work. But you know, you might, you know, if you're going to be doing any of this, you might as well, you know, go the whole way and restore the whole thing. But this is a real pain in the ass. It really sucks. <laughs> There's no way around it. It stinks. Nothing too exciting to watch, really. Which is why I think, I don't know if I recorded both sides. I think I just did the one here. Luckily it did come off. I was almost, I almost had to use a paint stripper to get this off. I didn't think it would come off with a heat gun because I, I tested a small area um, on one of the corners and it started lifting the wood and I thought that I would be screwed. And so I almost started using the paint stripper but uh, I tried a few other areas and was able to get it off slowly, but surely. I wish I could actually move this fast in real time. It would make this a lot more, a lot easier. Yeah, and then you got these little tiny pieces that want to stick on there. It, this is just, this is the, my least favorite thing to do with these games. Uh, right next to the Bondo and uh, laying the vinyl on. Any of the cosmetics. I would I would much rather work on the monitors or any of the electronics, the wiring, uh, 10 times over doing the cosmetic work, but you got to do it. So as you can see, I like to wear my pajamas normally when I'm working on these games it's usually really late at night I'm kind of a, a night owl and uh well not kind of I am a night owl so I'm usually working on this stuff pretty late at night usually after I get back from the gym and uh so I usually throw on my my pjs and a t-shirt and that way I'm comfortable we're almost done with this side almost done and right about here I should have tipped the, oh, there I go. But you can, can I don't know if you can see that, um, that mark on the carpet there. There's, it looks like a line. Yeah, I got the heat gun a little bit too low and melted some of the carpet. And that, that mark is, that's permanent. That's still there. I've, uh, I've ran into stuff like that where I've made some mistakes, getting a little bit too close to the carpet um, at my old apartment. I accidentally got a soldering iron too close and there was a nice like it was almost like I want to say half an inch of a burn mark deep into the carpet but uh I don't know got my full deposit back so they must have either not cared or not noticed 
I don't know how. Okay, so finally we got this side done. Okay, and here's the cabinet, both sides. I didn't record both sides to save you the hassle. But uh, I think we're going to stop here. And then next video we'll do the polyurethane and the Bondo and all that stuff. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in part two.